Good morning, Ronnie Mead. The uh, last few weeks we've been learning about healing prayer and uh, being a disciple of Christ. And uh, it's wonderful that uh, we are called to be co-workers with Christ, working with him in the power of the Spirit to bring the reality of, of the kingdom uh, to earth. Heaven has on earth. And today I want to just share some practical instructions on how to pray for healing, just, just to get started, because it's something that we can all do. It's something that uh, we're all called to do and, and have the ability to do through God's grace and through his, the power of the Holy Spirit. So I just wanted to start with making two points uh, this morning by, by way of review. You've often heard me talk about this whole idea of the kingdom now and not yet, and the kingdom is God's heavenly reign on earth, the reality of heaven uh, breaking into earth's reality. And that happened through the Lord Jesus Christ and his life, death and resurrection. And now uh, is happening now through his spirit uh, being in the church on earth. And um, there's this whole idea of the, Jesus inaugurated the kingdom and, and, and it came and, and uh, we saw the effects of that in his ministry, uh, the healings that took place, um, uh, helping the poor, teaching righteousness, and uh, Jesus teaching us how to love each other. And yet we know that the fullness of that kingdom comes when Jesus returns. Now, as I've said before, the one problem I have with that theology of, of kingdom now and not yet is that very often uh, we tend to push most of everything you know, into the future, into the not yet and uh, leave very little to be experienced right now in terms of in terms of expectation of what we can experience uh, in our in our day to day uh, Christian living. And uh, my point is that uh, I think we need to bring some of that back and expect more of the kingdom now. And I think that we can have the book of Acts in the first few centuries of the Christian church as our our model, our standard of uh, of what we can expect and, and uh, move into. There is so much uh, available to us through the kingdom now, the presence of the kingdom among us now. It's almost like uh, uh, you see the story sometimes expressed in different movies or books, but uh, someone who is an heir to a fortune, and yet they don't know that, and, and they're living in poverty, even though they have millions of dollars in the bank somewhere. And that's like uh, us sometimes. We're not aware of, of the, uh, the riches that we have in Christ, in the kingdom, and we're living in poverty. So there's so much more to discover in this, this life of following Jesus and uh, living in and out of the kingdom. And so the, the second point I want to make is this whole idea of seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus said that in Matthew 6.33. And uh, we are to seek the kingdom, even once we're in the kingdom through spiritual rebirth and faith in Christ, there's still so much more to be experienced. Now, the word seek in the Greek, it means to, to look for, to try, to obtain, to desire, to possess, to strive for. And that word strive means to devote serious effort and energy to something. So Jesus said, you know, to... He encouraged us to, to keep on seeking and keep on knocking and keep on asking. Uh, he said it is those who keep asking who will find and those who keep knocking uh, to whom the door will be opened. And it is to those who keep asking uh, that the answer is given. And so we need to we need to press in, need to keep seeking the kingdom uh, to, it, it, to experience more and more of the depths uh, of the of the kingdom of the power and abundance of the kingdom that is available to us as uh, children of God, and um, Paul says it in a wonderful way in Philippians three verse twelve. This uh, recognition of what he'd experienced, but also recognizing and acknowledging there's so much more that he wanted to experience, and he said, "I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me." Jesus Christ has taken hold of each of us uh, to lead us in uh, to a new life. And uh, what did Christ 
take us hold take hold of us for it was to experience the kingdom of god the presence of god's kingdom the inbreaking of heaven heaven's reality into earth and that includes forgiveness it includes the hope of heaven but so so much more we are to press in to what is available now in the kingdom and whether that's uh, seeking justice uh challenging injustice and, and seeking righteousness on earth for people, which is a good thing, whether it's seeking holiness, greater transformation into the image of Christ, that's also a very important thing in the kingdom, uh, whether it's greater intimacy with God, whether it's to experience more of the spiritual gifts, or whether it's to grow in this whole um, realm of healing prayer. It's something that we learn and that we grow by pursuing. So uh, it's an encouragement to, to keep on seeking and not give up. Uh, many of us know about Thomas Edison, who is credited with the invention of the incandescent light bulb. And uh, it's interesting, I was reading about him this week, and he was not the first to develop the light bulb or have a patent on some form of the light bulb. In fact, there were about 20 people before him who developed different versions of the incandescent uh, light bulb, but none of them became commercially viable. They had various problems. They didn't last long enough. They weren't bright enough, or maybe they were too bright, or they were too expensive to produce. But uh, Thomas Edison, through hundreds and hundreds of experiments and failures, and experimenting again, finally came up with the right combination of uh, the right kind of filament, uh, the way to have the uh, right vacuum in the glass bulb, and the right amount of electrical resistance. And he finally came up with a light bulb that was um, commercially viable. And so that's why we think of him. That has a great application to the spiritual life because growth in the spiritual life involves our effort and our seeking combined with God's grace God's provision and the power of the kingdom among us. And it's those two things together. So my encouragement is that we all seek and that we all desire to possess all that's available to us in the kingdom, to strive for that, to seek first the kingdom. And this is very relevant to this whole area of uh, the practice of healing prayer. And uh, my encouragement to you, uh, is just to step out and do it and give it a try. See it as an adventure in the spirit. Uh, you're with Jesus as his disciple, and he's showing you how to do what he did. Uh, today, I'd like to share a, a model, a pattern of prayer to use as, as a, a learning tool for growing in healing prayer. Now, we can't reduce healing prayer to some kind of formula. But it can help us get started. Uh, I don't know about you, but I remember when I was uh, young and uh, learning how to ride the bicycle. And uh, my dad fitted up the bicycle with, with training wheels to begin with. And I rode on that for a number of weeks. And then finally, uh, and just to get my confidence. And uh, then finally, he took the wheels off and said, OK, now it's now it's time to ride without them. And he said, but I'll... You start pedaling and I'll hold the back seat and I'll make sure you don't fall. And uh, so I started pedaling down the street and my dad ran after me withholding it. But, but at some point he let go and I didn't know. Uh, and uh, I'd been riding for quite a while. And I looked back and uh, my dad was not there anymore. And I was, uh, I was still vertical and still riding. And uh, that's the way it is in the spirit too. And... Uh, with, with having a model, we, we use it to get us going to gain confidence and experience. And, and then at some point, we don't necessarily need to follow it so rigorously. And what I want to share today is what is, is known as the relational five-step model of healing prayer. And it's something that I'm, I'm not too sure where it developed. The first person um, I heard it from was from John Wimber. And uh, then through by him through other people like Randy Clark. And so this model gives a bit of structure to healing prayer while allowing space to listen and to respond to the Holy Spirit. Now, it's only a model and it's not to be taken legalistic. However, 
I have found it's very helpful and I, and I still use it most of the time. I like it because its focus is on healing prayer being relational. We do it, number one, in relationship to God, listening to the voice of the Spirit, and number two, in relationship with people, the people we are praying for, listening and being sensitive to them. And uh, so the first point, uh, the first uh, uh, stage of this of this prayer, prayer pattern is listening prayer, uh, where we talk to people and ask them questions. So it involves listening to the person we're praying for and also listening to God, listening to the Holy Spirit. So listening to the person. In Mark 9, 21, uh, we read uh, of an interview that actually that Jesus has uh, with the father of the boy who had seizures. If you remember, the father brought the boy and, and the disciples could not initially heal him. But Jesus asked the father, he said, how long has he been like this? So we can use this as a model for the need to ask for information pertinent to the person's condition and healing. Uh, of course, this all depends on how well you know the person. It's, if it's a, a family member or a friend, you may know a lot already. But if you don't know the person so well, then it can be quite helpful. Even if you know the person, it can be helpful to get a bit of background information. So the purpose of this listening time is to discover uh, the, any root cause of the sickness or condition, and that will inform us in how we can pray. Um, and even after this process, we still may not know, but we shouldn't let that stop us from praying. Um, so an, an example of some questions that, that uh, we may ask is, uh, you know, what would you like prayer for? What, what's the problem? How long have you had this condition? Was there any major event in your life in, in the, around the time or in, in, the, in the previous six months to the time this, be, this condition began? Um, why do you think you have this condition? It could be genetic or it could be a lot of things. Um, and there's various causes for, for physical uh, sickness. It could be natural. It could be spiritual. It could be an afflicting spirit. It could be emotional. It could be social. Or it could be a traumatic experience that someone has had. It could have been because of an accident. And so it's important just to ask those questions and, and to listen to the person. Uh, I love the motto that Christian Healing Ministries has, uh, and it goes, listen, love, pray. Very simple. But in listening, we're, we're showing love to people, we're loving people, and there's often a great deal of healing that happens just by someone being listened to. Now, the second part of this is listening to God, listening to the Holy Spirit. And this will involve stopping for a, a quiet time of prayer and listening. After you've talked to the person, uh, you can say, well, let's just let's just stop for a minute and, and listen to the Holy Spirit and see what the Holy Spirit has to say. Um, and the Holy Spirit may give impressions. He gave me. He may give words of knowledge or prophetic words. He may give a vision or guidance. He just may speak something. He may actually give you insight uh, into something into the, the person's life or, or, or background. Uh, but the issue is dependence on the Holy Spirit. That's the most important thing to remember about this whole area of, of healing prayer is dependence on the Holy Spirit, listening and, and keeping in tune with him. Uh, John Wimber warns against trying to copy any previous experiences we've had, uh, regardless of how good they have been, because uh, we can tend to maybe rely on those previous experiences or previous ways of doing things rather than a, a fresh experience of the Holy Spirit at the time. This, the second step in this prayer model after listening is prayer selection. So based on the things learned while listening to the person and, and listening to the Holy Spirit, is that uh, we, uh, the purpose of all that is to identify root causes and pray accordingly. Now, many of those who practice healing prayer comment on how important it is to pray specifically. Uh, the more specific the prayer it is, it seems the more powerful and effective it can be. So to pray specifically for uh, uh, a particular condition or situation. A person may have one, more than one need, or and it's important to kind of just pray for the one particular need at a time. And that's helpful. 
Now, there are many kinds of prayer, uh, as Paul says in Ephesians 6, but three kinds of prayer that are very pertinent uh, to healing ministry are petitionary prayer, commanding prayer, and praying in the Spirit. Petitionary prayer is basically prayer towards God on behalf of someone else. It's simply asking God. And uh, commanding prayer is the kind of prayer often used by Jesus and the disciples. In Acts 3 verse 6, we read how Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Um, Many people feel uncomfortable with this kind of commanding or declarative prayer, and it feels almost like a bit presumptuous, like who are we to be praying that way? But it's good to remember that that's, that's the kind of prayer that was most often used by Jesus and, its, and his disciples. And it's important to remember that it's God's power, it's God's authority that's given, not ours. Um, the third kind of prayer is prayer in the Spirit, or praying in tongues, either audibly or under our breath. John Wimber said that he often used type, this type of prayer because praying in tongues edifies us and sensitizes our Holy Spirit uh, to God's Spirit to receive from God. He said that when he wasn't sure what was going on, he'd often step back and just pray in the Spirit for a, a while and then would often receive further guidance. So, uh, for those of us, uh, for those of you who are familiar with that kind of prayer, that's also something that you can engage in. Now, next, the third step is the actual prayer ministry. Once you've li- listened uh, to the person and to the Holy Spirit and uh, decided and had received guidance on, on what to pray for and how to pray. Um, and uh, so, again, we, uh, we begin to pray for the particular need. And um, so petitionary prayer again, uh, praying towards God on behalf of the person. So a, a sample, an example of how we might pray would be, come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray for this person to be healed and be free of this sickness. Or another example may be, we bless you, and put the person's name there, we bless you in the name of Jesus, come Holy Spirit. We ask for your kingdom to come, Jesus, to bring healing for this need, and then just to name the need. Uh, an, example, an example of a commanding prayer might be, we command this prayer, we, com- we command this pain to leave in Jesus' name. In the authority he gives, we declare healing. Or another example would be, in Jesus' name, we bind the effects of this sickness. It has no right to be there. We declare healing over this person's body and command this sickness to go. Now, some people say that commanding prayer is often uh, a result of a a particular leading, special leading or or unction of of the Holy Spirit or the anointing of the Spirit. And we really feel strongly compelled uh, to pray for a person in a very particular way. Now, there are two other things to remember that we can apply when we are doing the prayer of healing and that we see these used in the Bible, and that's the laying on of hands and anointing with oil. And both of them seem to be a a physical, symbolic uh, way of of ministering to somebody and imparting uh, God's healing power. So laying on of hands, we see in the Bible. And uh, it's important to always ask permission of someone, even if someone you know someone well, and just say, do you mind if I just put my hand on your shoulder or your head and as a point of contact to pray? And they may say yes, uh, or they may say they may say no, and then you say fine, I just want you to feel comfortable. Um, but it's just following a biblical model. The same with anointing with oil. You can ask someone, would you like us to anoint you with oil in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And again, this is very uh, biblical, James 5, um, verses 14 to 16, uh, James says that, you know, if any of you among you are sick, I let them call for the elders of the church to come and pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And so you can just take oil and make a, a, a sign of the cross um, on their head and, and maybe their hands and say, I anoint you with oil 
healing oil in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and somehow, again, that is a, a point of contact and impartation of the power of the Spirit. And so it's good to do that. And then just to to pray, you often do those things at the beginning, and just to, to pray for the person uh, for that particular need. Now, step four is, uh, you know, very often we... We pray, we pray for healing and for a few minutes, and then we're not too sure what to do after that. And we feel a bit embarrassed, like, do I ask how they're doing? Or or sometimes, often we just kind of leave it, and uh, we just leave it there. And, uh, uh, but it's a, it's, it's a good idea just to stop. And, and many people say, just, just pray for three or five, three to five minutes. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It can be as short as one or two minutes. Um, and, and then to stop and check in, listen again, go back to that second, that, that uh, first step of, of listening. Uh, in Mark eight twenty two to twenty five, we're given um, uh, there's an example where Jesus um, did not heal somebody instantly uh, and completely the first time. Uh, he applies a spit to the person's blind, the man's, you know, the, the, the blind man's eyes, and then Jesus asked him, uh, "Do you see anything?" And the man looked up and said, I see people as trees walking. And it says once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes and then the man could see uh, perfectly. So this shows that it's good to stop and ask questions and listen uh, some more after an initial, the first initial time of prayer. You want to find out what's happening, if anything's happened. Now, very often God is doing something and, and the person can't, feel anything or sense anything, and that, that's fine. But very often something is happening, and it's helpful and encouraging uh, to know. So we, we, we stop and we ask um, how they're doing and, and ask them, is anything going on? Uh, are you feeling anything? Another important thing to say to someone that's being prayed for is, is to say, don't you bother praying. You don't have to pray. We'll pray for you. But encourage them to uh, be aware of their body, fo- to focus on the body and to, to be aware of any kind of changes that may, may be happening or anything they're feeling. So we can ask, do you, do you feel anything? Do you, and uh, very often when the Holy Spirit is, is working in someone's body to bring healing, that there will be uh, a warmth, a sense of warmth or a, a deep sense of, of peace or maybe even a, a little shaking or something. Uh, or other kinds of manifestations. We may ask, do you notice any changes? You know, if, if at the beginning the pain was a 10, you know, is it, what is it now in a range of one to 10? Is it a five out of 10? Has it gone down at all? Um, ask what's happening. Ask them if maybe while they've been prayed for, if, if anything's come to their mind about that might be relevant to that particular need. And uh, so, and if they are, experiencing some warmth or something, that's an encouraging sign. And then to go back and to keep praying some more uh, in that area, just to to say, you know, uh, yeah, Lord, send more of your healing and uh, to continue to lay hands on someone. Sometimes, you know, very often just laying hands on someone and being silent uh, in prayer and in the presence of the Holy Spirit and praying softly and even, even praising God and worshiping as you're laying hands on somebody, that is also a very powerful way to to bring uh, healing uh, to somebody. Um, but you know, after the interview, the, the, you may want to pray again and just listen to the Holy Spirit again, if you sense that there's more that God is doing more. And uh, that's uh, often uh, so often when a breakthrough happens. Randy Clark relates uh, this story to illustrate the value of this model. And uh, in particular, the step of of checking back in with the person and and listening some more. He says this, um, and I'm quoting again from his book, The Essentials of Healing Prayer. I was praying for a woman in Brazil who had lost her vision and asked her about any trauma that she may have had around that time. Uh, But she told me there had been none. The only thing that bad that had happened was that was her father's death. But that had been several years ago. I prayed, commanding her eyes to see, and for all parts of her eyes that were not working to work, uh, for any part of her eye that he de- degenerated to regenerate. So you see there he's praying very specifically. However, he said nothing was happening. I stopped 
and I talked some more with her. I did not think her condition had psychosomatic roots, uh, and I asked her more questions, but no clues were forthcoming. Then, so he paused, uh, obviously, and, and was listening, had one ear open to, to the Holy Spirit as he was listening to the woman. He said, um, then I had an impression, and the Holy Spirit was the source of the next question. How soon did the blindness begin after your father's death? She told me it was instant. I asked her, were you with your father when he died? She said, yes. I asked, were you touching him when he died? Again, she responded, yes. Instantly, the Holy Spirit gave me a gift of faith. I was 100% sure that this was not blindness with a natural or psychosomatic cause, but it was in fact caused by an afflicting spirit that had something to do with her father's death. I prayed and she could see right away. Had I not gone back and re-interviewed and talked to her some more, I might not have discovered the root cause of this blindness. So isn't that an interesting story? Now, I don't want you to um, take from the story that you should be afraid of, of, of ever being uh, with someone as, as, they're, as they're passing away or, or, or anything like that. Uh, but it's, it's just a story to show that what can happen and the need for listening to God and to people and, and being guided by the Holy Spirit to, to the many causes that, that may be behind physical illness. So this is the value of this relational uh, model of prayer. It's basically a three-way conversation that's going on between us and God, between us and the person we're praying for, and uh, with others who may be praying with us and checking in and with other people who are praying and say, did you receive anything uh, uh, from the Holy Spirit, any insight? And uh, so it's, it's, it can be done in a very relaxed and, and interactive and hopeful kind of way and in a loving atmosphere. And the fifth step of this, of this prayer model is the post-prayer ministry, just kind of wrapping things up. And uh, whether the person has experienced a full healing or a partial healing uh, or something going on, or maybe no noticeable change at all, it's always good to, um, to end your prayer, uh, number one, with the time of blessing the person. Uh, and it, it can be as simple as, uh, I bless you now uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I bless you to go in his peace. Um, it's also too good to encourage people. Uh, you may have a scripture that you want to give them as they go. Or you may um, have a, a YouTube video that you want to refer them to or a book that you want to, to give them. Um, and to remind them that uh, even if nothing seemed to have happened, that very often uh, healing is gradual and, and the results of a healing prayer session can be experienced uh, a few days after even. So that's the, the relational uh, five-step prayer model that, uh, that I often use. And they, models can be useful, but again, I'm just going to say uh, they, there can be a danger of depending on them and using them as a formula rather than depending on the Holy Spirit. So it's a bit of both and. We need to listen to God for direction in each situation. But the... the, the, the one of the main points I want to make today is that the healing ministry and healing prayer is relational to the core. Our relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, and our relationship with the person that we are praying uh, for and the people that we are praying with. I would like you to consider this week uh, to, to pray for an opportunity uh, to pray for someone for healing to actually practice on someone uh, this in the next week or two. It may f seem funny to talk about it in those ways, but uh, but why not? You know, sometimes we over-spiritualize things and we make things uh, too too out there or holy or, or whatever. And God is just inviting us to, to learn how to do this stuff. And um, it can be uh, it can be quite exciting and uh, a very a, a very joyful sort of thing to engage in. Um, so my encouragement is find someone to practice on this week. Maybe grab your husband or wife or one of your kids and, you know, it could be something as small uh, as a cold 
or an earache or, or a child with a sore finger or something and just say, you know, do you mind if I pray for that? And it can be a lot simpler and shorter than what I've described here today. Um, but I hope that this model will you'll find helpful and might encourage you to kind of step out. And uh, I would uh, encourage you also, if you're interested in growing in this area, I just want to review some of the books that I have referred to over the last four or five weeks and encourage you to uh, uh, read up on these more. And a number of these books have models of prayer similar to what I've shared with you today. First of all, there's the, the book called Healing by Francis McNutt, who uh, comes from a, came from a, a Catholic uh, background. And uh, the second book I mentioned was uh, Christian Healing by Mark Pearson, and he comes from an Episcopal background. And then there's the uh, Essential Guide to Healing Prayer by Randy Clark, who comes from, uh, believe it or not, a Baptist background, Baptist slash uh, vineyard uh, type background. And, and finally, uh, a book I love that is, is called, is by Richard Foster, Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. And he has several chapters in that book on healing prayer and commanding prayer and such. And interestingly enough, he comes from a Quaker background. So there you have all the denominations uh, represented, which, which shows that this, the, you know, the topic of healing prayer is, is uh, something of interest uh, across the body of Christ. I'd like to bless you now as you go this week and uh, uh, grow in this whole area of healing prayer. I bless you with a spirit of adventure in the Holy Spirit to step out and explore and discover greater depths of the kingdom, greater depths of who you are as a son or daughter of God, filled with the Spirit, freely forgiven, reconciled to God, having the gifts of the Spirit to be a blessing to those around you. May he give you the confidence and boldness and the love and the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit to step out and pray for someone this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine according to his power that is in within us. To him, let there be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations and our generation forever and ever. Amen.